Chris McDonald knows all there is to know about the steel industry. Uh, he's a chief executive of the Materials Processing Institute and has worked closely with Sheffield Forge Masters and is with us right now. Hello, Chris. Good morning, Becky. That's a very kind introduction. It's nice to be with you this morning. It's lovely to have you here, my lovely. So what does this n news mean for the workers at Forge Masters? Um, well, I think uh, it's, it's a fantastic investment in the future. And I mean, you know, I, uh, as you say, I've worked up quite a bit with uh, Sheffield Forge Masters. It's such an imposing presence on Brightside Lane and such a historic business as well. But it's a really modern, profitable, advanced manufacturing company, too, that's producing equipment that's vital for national security. Um, and so it's not only about the employees and the local community, but actually for all of us in the UK who rely on submarines as our last line of defence, I think we can all sleep easier in our beds knowing that Sheffield, Sheffield Steel is protecting those submariners and it will be protecting all of us into the future. Just literally putting Sheffield totally pinpointed on that map once again. I love it. Like you say, what does it really mean for the future of the British steel industry? You sort of touched on it there, but this is massive, really. It, it is, and I think that um, I think it's a, it, there are some lessons we can learn, and there are some things that are very special about Forge Masters. So you, you heard David Bond there, and, and he's right to point out it's a profitable business, but this is a huge recapitalisation, replacement of their equipment. The company had already started to do that with the announcement of a new 120 million pound press in April. Um, and, and this is a sort of special solution to fix that for Forge Masters. I think what we need to think about for the rest of the industry, and there are other steel producers in Sheffield as well, is they've also got to make a lot of investment over the coming decades to prevent carbon emissions and to create the infrastructure we need for the future as well. And, and I think different solutions will need to be found for the different steel companies, uh, depending on their own businesses. I mean, we are, you know, we are known as as the city of steel, um, but obviously the competition, it must have been very difficult because we've been competing against countries like India uh, and China who can produce sort of cheaper steel. How difficult has that been? Yeah, well, you're right. I mean, look, I'm speaking to you from Teesside, where my research institute's based. We develop new technologies for the steel sector. And Teesside's got a strong steel heritage, but everybody knows Sheffield is really the heart of steel. And we'll be seeing that in September. The global eyes of the global steel industry will be turning to Sheffield when we host the um, European Electric Steel Making Conference at the, the Diamond Centre and Cutlass Hall as well. So that heritage is important, but, you know, that's not what makes sales around the world. Um, you can't make steel in the UK unless it's very high quality um, and, and the most advanced type. Um, and we do that at Sheffield at Forge Masters, at Outcompu Stainless Steel, and, of course, the Liberty Steel business as well, which has been in the news recently. Is there a downside, though, Chris? I mean, it seems both uh, politicians on both sides have, have welcomed this deal. But is, is there any negatives? Well, you know, none that I can see. And I'm not usually hesitant in coming forward if I have any criticisms. But it, it's vital for the UK that we maintain this defence capability. It, it's inconceivable we could allow this business to fall into foreign hands. I mean, the, um, the steel that's manufactured for, for submarines and for defences, it has a very special properties that are that's absolutely secret it, it's up because it's so integral to to keeping those uh, those those submariners and, and, and naval personnel safe whilst they're at sea so we couldn't let it fall into foreign hands it relies on on british innovation um and and you know as david said you know 400 million pound investment it's, it's enormous um, but i think more than that we also heard from him that this will be the cornerstone of their order book and forge masters will still be able to go out and compete for other commercial business as well um, and that, that will also really help. So I, I think we'll see, you know, solid investment in the business for the future. All sounding lovely and positive there. That's Chris McDonald, who's the chief executive of the Materials Processing Institute, talking to me about the nationalisation of Sheffield Forge Masters.